flag as a storm and now coach of the Roos. Welcome, Reese, and well done. Thanks, home cheers. So, that shot of you in the long sleeve. Yep. Did they not have a jumper that fit you? No, that, that was the trend back in the day, the big extra large, but I was, I was trying to hold my spaghetti arms at that stage. I was weighing about 68 kilos, so couldn't get away with it. It's been a remarkable journey. The most um, brilliant thing, I think, post career is the coaching journey. We've got some um, CV here for you to go through, but the assistant coach of the year, voted by the AFL Coaches Association, back to back in 17 and 18, is a huge tip of the hat to any assistant coach, and those that have won it previously have gone on to great things. Yeah, look, it was, a, it was certainly a great honour and um, I'm really privileged to be voted that the first time and, and even the second time and um, I'm really proud of the way I've, I've gone about it at this point in time and, and hopefully it continues. Amazing how things can change in football. You're at the Swans, NEFL coach, suddenly at the Roos and seven months later you're actually in charge. Yeah, look, it's, it's happened really quickly. Um, didn't expect that uh, when I was speaking to Brad last year. But uh, look, things happen and um, I'm really enjoying my time at the footy club. I, I just love it. It's, it's such a great place to, to work. And although we've had a few tough times of recent, um, hopefully we're, we're getting through and we can really put our best foot forward going forward. And when you're asked to become the caretaker coach, was it an easy decision? Certainly, certainly not. Um, it, it is really tough when you put in that circumstance and, and I thought about it for, for a little bit and uh, ultimately put my hand up, but um, it, it really was a tough decision because it's a lot of responsibility. How much sleep have you had since you've become senior coach? <laughs> yeah, not a lot. I've, uh, I wouldn't say, wouldn't say much, probably 12 hours I reckon. Total? Yeah, it's been, it's, I think it's just the adrenaline rush and you, you want to make sure you're doing the right thing, ticking all the boxes and I remember Darren Crocker told me early in, early in the week that when he was in, in the same position that um, he was fumbling for a notepad um, at two, 2 o'clock in the morning because right, he had all these down. ideas, yeah, so um, it, it really does take hold of you, And but uh, look, I'm, I'm just loving it. It's, it's a fantastic opportunity for me, but I'm just loving the way the guys are going about it. And if you were going to distill everything you've learnt from all of the great coaches and sort of sum up what makes a great co coach or what is the art of coaching, what do you think it is? Uh, it's pretty simple for me and that's uh, making sure the players are comfortable and clear in, in what they're going to achieve on the weekend and what I want them to achieve and I think uh, we saw that pretty pretty much on Friday night and um, I was really proud of their efforts, it was fantastic. Well let's go to Friday night, uh, the Tigers arrived, they were the favourites, there was a lot of unknown about the Kangaroos but have a look at that last half, out to a 37 point win, Sean Higgins in his words was brilliant, cunning that had most of the football, <laughs> Benny Brown 5, <laughs> Mason Wood 4, it was a pretty polished performance but just take us through um, your night, your day, I think you said Reese post match that you went for a run at the club just to try and yeah. settle the nerves. Yeah look it was, I, I woke up pretty early and um, I was pretty anxious to get, get the game up and running. And being a 7.50 game, it, was, it took a long while to come around. So I just went to the club, got a bit of kit on and uh, went for a jog. And I was lucky enough, Benny Mackay was coming to the club for the VFL meeting. He took a video of me, so I'm, I'll probably get stitched up during the week as well. <laughs> Reese, now you're one game in, but looking a bit more long term in terms of the list demographic you've got. Yep. Is, it time, is, is there a philosophy to rebuild or is that young talent you've got, Zerha, David Juniak, Simpkin, Wood, who are starting to really emerge and become genuine AFL players, um, are they the answer long term? Yeah, I think it's, it's been a bit interesting because we, we've been playing the kids a lot all year and um, they've, been, they've been pretty good, they've been a bit inconsistent but I think what we saw on Friday night was just those guys getting a little bit more opportunity in their preferred position and then um, then taking it. So they, they've had those opportunities, but just on Friday night they took it. Uh, Joy Simpkin and, and LDU were fantastic um, on Friday. And well, we all saw what Cam Zerha did as well. So that, He's a like, beast, isn't he? Yeah, and he just loves it. And like, he's one of my favourites, so I must admit, because I just love the way he goes about it. Um, he's got that bit of strut about him. Um, he loves hitting bodies and um, he's really team first. Yeah, Shawnee, sure. what, what, what is it? Uh about the players, all of a sudden uh, on Friday night, you were able to play like you haven't played before. Yeah, well, it's funny, um, Gilly, because it, it, it does look like that, but we feel like internally that it's been building for a number of weeks. And uh, our last month, 
has been pretty good. The last two weeks, clearly, and sure, he touched on it, but our, our pressure's gone up and it's, it's looking a lot better around the contest. It doesn't feel a lot different out there. I know that that's it's funny to say, but um, it's a fine line we're bringing in at the moment. We've brought it the last two weeks. Probably felt like that's been building on the back of the last four weeks. Is there sort of a bizarre feeling, Sean, in terms of you've had Brad Scott there, you've had him all the time at the Kangaroos, then new man in charge. You've almost got to prove yourself again to the new principal or the new teacher? Yeah, well, I think you're always trying to prove yourself to the coach and to all the coaches to, to do what they want and yep. um, and also to your teammates. So there's maybe a little bit of that. Maybe that's what we fed off on Friday night. But um, sure, he hasn't tweaked too much in terms of the game plan. He encourages us to do what we do. But clearly the focus around the pressure and the contest was there Friday night. I suppose, Sean and, and Reese, the, the guys you brought in over the, the summer who probably would have been pitched by Brad and, and the match committee at the time, Hall, uh, Dom Tyson, Cam, uh, Jared Pollock. Where, how, how do you think they take it, I suppose, at six months later, da later down the track from their decision to come? New coach, new demographic, what's, uh, what's your take on that? Well, hopefully they take it um, well, and they have so far. All the evidence um, the last week suggests that they have, and it's a tough situation for them. It's a tough situation for all. And there's guys that have been there for 10 years, guys that have been drafted, guys that have moved over from other clubs like myself, and then there's guys that have just come on board yep. the last six months. Um, none of this was planned, but we need to adapt. Sure, he's made that transition as smooth as possible, as have all the coaches. Um, we need to show those new guys support so they feel right at home. Um, and they're all playing really good football, whether that be in the AFL or VFL. Uh, we just have a look at Ben Brown, who was outstanding on Friday night. The Tigers have had a bit of a problem when they've got beaten by big, tall forwards. He kicked five straight and was terrific in the air. But just following up from what um, Mike was saying, did you go to every player um, individually once the announcement was made? Um, I, I've tried to get to everyone as much as possible. I've, yep. I've had a few meetings with... Uh, at least 16 of the blokes um, and just trying to get them to explain what, what they're feeling at the moment because yeah. as we know it's a really hard time like, as Higo said guys have been there for 10 years with, with Brad and um, he's a fantastic coach he's a fantastic person so for him to um, move on it's always going to be a hard change and I just wanted to make sure those guys um, knew that we were all there to support them and um, any thoughts or queries they had that they can always come and ask. Yep. Jory, 11 games left. I mean, two games out of the eight yep. is the ceiling, really. There is no ceiling for your group. How, what, what are your thoughts on what the rest of 2019 holds for the North Melbourne Football Club? Yeah, look, it's, it's pretty exciting the last five weeks, as Higo said. We, we've been playing some pretty good footy. We, we feel as though we haven't taken the opportunities in a couple of games and we obviously didn't get the results. But the last two weeks, I think, really have um, shown what, we can, what we're capable of and... Um, hopefully that can continue, but look, um, I'm pretty sure that most of the guys will be concentrating on Gold Coast this week and um, that's all we can really focus on because if you look too far ahead then it starts to get a bit clouded for everyone. We want to make sure our focus is wholly and solely on the Gold Coast. Reese, in between chowing down on milk bottles and snakes alive, <laughs> did you think that, uh, just go back a step, if there's any umpire that's going to get hit in the chicken McNuggets on a no. Friday night, who's it going to be? I was wrapped. Absolutely wrapped. <laughs> you, can't, you can't script it, can you? Nah. There's only one guy. Nah, it's great. Look at him. He, just, he loves it. But look, he's a, he's a character and um, he'll take that in his stride. I love the little role too that he sort of puts yeah. on here. Yeah. He wouldn't have gone down. He gave he himself out too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, quick break. Uh, how many weeks should you get for drinking two nights before a game? I'll ask the guys. Cats and Swans still be reviewed and eight days until the big freeze at the G will tell you who's sliding. <laughs>